Okay guys, this video is not mine, I'm just doing my best to translate it and I hope you'll understand. All rights goes to Leprechaun, check out his channel. Hi everyone and welcome to this video. Today we're gonna get some Logitech gaming keyboards working on Linux through the Ground15 project, which is unfortunately no longer supported. It's pretty messy actually. There are a bunch of repositories that doesn't work or compile either. That's the list of working devices. I do have a G110 keyboard here, but if you have a different one, it's really gonna work for yours too. So, how about we start from the beginning? First off, you have to download this package, link in the description, in which you will find few folders. The daemon, the macro utility, which will have to stay active, otherwise it won't work. But I fixed this and I show you how. The patched libraries and of course the lib USB. I've put both 141 and 093 in the package since I don't remember which one is the right one. So you have to try both in case one of them is not working. And last but not least, my script to keep things cool. First off, let's get to the libusb folder. We will assume it's the 141, the good one. Uh, in order to get the libs installed, we need to gain root privileges. Uh, so we're gonna type sudo python setup.py install. I'm not really gonna issue this command right now since it's working perfectly and I don't wanna risk to fuck up everything once again. Uh, you will understand me, I hope. Anyway, the installation will proceed smooth as hell and uh, you will get the library installed, I swear. We can now move to the parent directory to install the libraries. Only thing we'll need to do is type dot forward slash configure and press return. If everything went fine, you should type make and, and sudo make install. From now on, we have the patched libraries for the G110. We now need to install the daemon. As before, we type in dot forward slash configure and return. And then make and, and sudo make install. And this will let you through the installation of daemon version 193553 or whatever. In order to get proper responses to the G key being pressed, we need to install G15 macro too. As always, dot forward slash configure return. And that's when you start blaming yourself for what you've done since here. But don't worry, it's pretty normal. In fact, we just need to install the X software development. For doing that, here on Fedora, we shall use group install. And don't worry, because you can uninstall it right after. Now, you could be interested in making the LED working too, especially because the following is mandatory to get my script working. So yeah, you don't really have much choice unless you edit the script. There are two versions of the utility. The first one is changing the background color with the one you choose. If you don't change a color, it will loop through all the colors, which is very cool, but stressful indeed. If you do, you can set a value from 1 through 255. 1 is red. The more you increase, the bluish you'll get. In fact, 255 is blue. By the way, you may adjust the loop speed by changing the fade speed parameter if you're looping. The second one is changing the coloration based upon the CPU load. Nice, huh? But I'm not gonna use it since I'm not interested in this feature. Before we begin, I'll just show you how to manually change the color. The utility is named gcolor, so all you have to do is open up a terminal and execute gcolor and the corresponding color number, of course. Now it's blue, and now it's back red. There's a make file in the folder, and once you choose the script you want, you just have to rename it to match the make file command, or even better, change the make file parameter to match the source file. 
Now all you have to do is move the terminal to the folder and issue the make command. After that we are gonna rename this file to gcolor and paste it through to usrsbin to get it called from the shell, of course. Let's focus on my script for a while. All it's actually doing is starting the daemon, starting the macro utility under a screen shell, so we are free to leave the session. If you don't have screen installed yet, you should. sudo dnf install screen, that's the command. That's because the daemon will keep the shell busy. As you can see, I'm stuck on the terminal and I cannot quit. Using screen helps to background the shell without losing it. By now, the script gives us a notification that the daemon is started and will blink the LED to celebrate. Well, I didn't like the idea to put root password each time, so I found a quick and dirty workaround someone may want like. But anyway, we're gonna append these two lines on the bottom of sudoers file. Uh, that's to tell the G15 daemon and gcolor executables to run with root privileges without needing to ask for a password. That way we won't need to launch the script as a super user. Now, if you need to stop the g15 daemon, you just need to type sudo g15 daemon minus k. We're gonna issue the command right now, so we can launch the script from scratch. Let's execute it and ta-da! As you can see, we now have a try icon telling us the processes, IDs and names. Now you surely need to record a macro. And to do so, you first have to choose which profile to record on. M1, M2 or M3. Press the memory button, then the key or combination you want to trigger. And then the G macro key. But let's see an example. First off, I resume the screen session. I press M3 on the keyboard, so I press, uh, let's say, the letter N and then G1. So, as you can see, now, if I press the G1 key, it will get the N key triggered. It's working for a letter, but it will work for combination too, like Ctrl X and so. If I wanted to delete a macro, I'd press the memory key, the macro key, and I'm deleting both. By now, the G key is reverted back to its original key code. But what if I wanted to record Ctrl C macro? As you know, Ctrl C means the terminal should interrupt the process, so we wouldn't be able to capture it. But I figured out a way to do so by pressing each key separately and then merging them into the configuration file. Now that you recorded all of your macro, don't dare closing the daemon yet, because you're gonna lose everything. In fact, we have to commit the changes first. We'll type a G15 macro minus H in a new shell. By doing that, the daemon will dump everything to a setting file. Okay, I think uh, we've pretty much done. I hope you will find no particular issues by following this guide and please don't hesitate to let me know if you need another video on tricky stuff like this. Peace.